Hey Wildlings, Colin Stuckert here, founder, CEO, Wild Foods Co. In today's video, we're gonna talk about our Wild Foods presentation. So this is a brief intro to Wild Foods, what we believe, what we do. There's also a really great bit of information, uh, the 10 ways, the 10 first principles of living wild that we base a lot of our philosophy on. And these are just the first principles of how humans can be healthy. And so I'm gonna kind of go through the beginning of the, of the presentation uh, just a little bit and maybe touch on things here and there. We're not going to read each line on each slide because I want to get to some of the meat and potatoes of the guide. You can actually find this at wildmission.co and that'll redirect you. And a uh, trick if you want to read through this solely on yourself is use the arrow keys and it will take you forward and backwards. Okay. So Living Wild, a Wild Foods presentation by Wild Foods Co. Thank you for joining us on our wild journey. We get into the wild story. I recommend reading this to learn how we came about, which really directs why we do what we do and what we believe at Wild Foods. A little bit about our why, what we believe in. Wild Foods was founded out of a deep obsession with putting only the best ingredients in my body. Every product we have since launch holds true to that standard. If we won't use it, we won't sell it. And that is forever and always will be the Wild Foods ethos. Our mission is to help 10 million people. I actually need up to 50 million because we decided 10 million was a bit too low and we've already reached a million customers in a few short years. And as we grow, we can reach more and more. So we're going to update that soon. You can learn a little bit about our mission. I got a video, there's, there's some good articles, go through that. The Wild Way, which talks about our sourcing methods and why certain ingredients will never be in Wild Foods products because we believe they don't contribute to long-term health. And so everything we source to Wild Foods is based on living a long time. Wild Manifesto, the ancestral view, how looking back is our best way to move forward. And this is what my life is built around. This is what a lot of our content is built around. It's about looking back to the human animal because humans are animals. We are homo sapiens sapiens and we have a certain biology. We have a certain way and environment and diet that we should live based on how we've lived in the wild for hundreds of thousands of years. And, you know, even though we've invented agriculture in the past 12,000 years and that created cities and money and led, led to the modern world we live in, our genes and our biology hasn't really caught up, which is why, you you know, we see a 40%, 50% obesity rate, which is why 60 to, I think it's like almost 75% of Americans are considered overweight. Insane. And so the ancestral point of view, I'll read through this because this is just this is just golden, to figure out what makes a human healthy. We look to archaeological evidence and the words of anthropologists that have studied modern-day hunter-gatherer societies. Next are the countless success stories available from individuals using these concepts as part of the paleo, primal, ancestral, keto, and intermittent fasting movements to live better lives. In fact, most diets today use ancestral health principles whether they realize it or not. This gives us all the evidence we need to formulate the first principles of health, human health and nutrition. The ancestral point of view is the most all-encompassing philosophy there is for optimal human health, and that's something we will always stand by. 10,000 years since the widespread use of agriculture is a blink of an eye in evolutionary terms, which is why modern humans are getting sick in our current environment of food ubiquity, reduced movement, and less overall interaction with nature. The technologies we use on a daily basis have us staring at screens for an inordinate amount of times, producing maladaption in eyesight, phys psychology, is that, I might have to update that, I might be wrong, and posture. It looks spelled wrong. Is, is that right? Is it supposed psychology? I feel like the Y is supposed to be there. Maybe I meant to put physiology. I need to make a note to, to check that. We have yet to grasp the long-term effects digital technology will have on our species. So far, it's not looking good. We seek the path of, path of least resistance because our biology is programmed to conserve calories. Humans are programmed to be lazy when there wasn't a specific evolutionary reward in play in the form of food, sex, or survival, since needlessly using calories in the wild is a risky proposition. And so what we mean with that is we are naturally lazy. Humans are lazy if there's not something, if there's not a goal in sight. Like if we're not trying to get food or sex or if we're trying to find shelter or whatever, we have to move uh, you know, at a slow to medium pace a lot of the time, which is you know, it's low in the calorie expending realm, on the, of the spectrum, but we generally try to take the path of least resistance, like the shortest way. We try to park in front of the parking lot. These are reasons why this is. It's because calories in the wild 
are a resource, just like gas is to your car. You wouldn't drive around places, you know, you wouldn't drive 10 miles to get a place that's five miles away, right? You wouldn't go out of your way to use gas. It's the same way with calories for humans because calories are expensive. In the wild, food wasn't av available all the time, everywhere, and so easily accessible, which is why we had to conserve calories, especially when we weren't out trying to find calories or, you know, if we weren't doing something that would have an evolutionary reward and sex, sex for reproduction would, would be something that we would spend calories for because we had to do that because that's how we propagate the species. So without going too far down a tangent, that's what we mean by that. So visualize a world without farming, cars, hospitals, grocery stores, the internet, phones, running water, or medicine. Your genes, your habits, your biology, the people around you, the society you grew up in, and the culture you spend every waking day a part of is all working against you. To succeed in our modern environment, you must fight the many pressures all around you by making conscious decisions to do something different. You must ignore the cravings for the cheap, easy food that's everywhere. You will have to make smart decisions about how you live while the people around you will make poor decisions and trying to get you to join. Yeah, I need to change that to get results in our modern world. You often have to choose a past the path of most or more resistance while ignoring the easy path of least resistance. And what I mean by that is if you're driving to a store park at the back of the parking lot, not only will this reduce dings to your doors because people just open doors and they don't pay attention. This will increase the amount of time you walk and move. And in our modern environment, one is that has food everywhere. One that most modern humans are overweight or becoming more overweight every year. The more we can go out of our way to expend calories, the better it is because calories are all around us, right? Compared to in the wild, when calories were more scarce, we would go out of our way to avoid unnecessarily spending calories. Now we need to do the exact opposite because we live in an environment that is an exact opposite of how our ancestors lived for hundreds of thousands of years, which is what you get, you know, the mismatch concept. That's what that's all about. Oh, there you go. Mismatch. The more we consider the many variables between how we live today and how we are designed to live, it becomes obvious how mismatched we are to our current environment. Our environment is designed to support a lot of humans, not a lot of healthy humans. This environmental mismatch is at the root of our health problems today. A few examples of our mismatched environment include, instead of living closely with friends and family, we live in isolated buildings and cities. We don't walk through nature in search of food. Instead, we walk a few feet to the fridge. We don't sleep enough because we find this inconvenient. We stay up late staring at blue light from artificial screens. We don't move enough because we don't have to. We eat too much food too often, both of which have deter deleterious effects on our health. We eat fake processed, refined, and poisonous foods like sugar grains, fructose, and white starches. To beat our environmental mismatch or our mismatched environment, we all must be conscious of our choices. Choices in what we eat, how we move, and fundamentally how we spend our days. This is the ancestral perspective and it is based on the first principles of human biology. Principles. The first principles of human health based on biology and our ancestral past. Principle one, eat real food. And guys, I'm going to go through this real quick because this video is already turning out to be longer than I thought it was going to be. I wanted to just kind of do a brief um, run through of this and then give you the link so you can kind of read through it on your own. But let's just kind of run through these top 10. So principle one, real food. And this is really the foundation of all wild foods. It's what we base our sourcing on. It's what got me into nutrition. It's what got me into the, this space and this, and this business. And it really is the result of me just being obsessed with the foods I put in my body and going on kind of like a hunt to find you know, direct from the manufacturer, direct from the farms, find the, the, the highest quality ingredients in the world. And that's really how Wild Foods was born. Sleep. Sleep seven to eight, nine hours a night. And I just read a really great book on this. I believe it's 21 Sleep Habits or something. It's Sean Stevenson. Highly recommended. Uh, you know, to follow some of these things, especially the, the sound machine and making a pitch black room. This stuff will change your life. Movement. Like I said, park at the end of the parking lot, walk more, take the stairs while everyone, you know, the airport's taking the escalator sitting there. Like I always thought that was so hilarious. They'll, they, they take more time to get through the escalator and move less while I just take the stairs. I beat them and I burn more calories. You know, you have to think, you have to change how you think and you have to flip it around. Instead of the path of least resistance, go for the path of more resistance. Nature and sunlight. So getting outside is always going to be better for you. Humans are creatures that were designed by nature for nature. Now we live in boxes and buildings, and it's really disrupting our health. Principle five, intermittent fasting. 
Humans are not designed to eat three square meals a day, or really to eat on any kind of fixed schedule. This is why you should skip meals, you should mix up your eating, and you should always do things that would mimic how you would eat in the wild because that is what is best for your biology. And all the diet gurus and all the nonsense out there, even, even a lot of the research around this is very lacking or in a lot of times completely wrong. Like the idea that you should always eat breakfast or the idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. What most people don't understand about breakfast is breakfast is breaking the fast. So it doesn't matter what time it is, breaking the fast is always breaking the fast. Right? I usually break my fast, so I eat my breakfast at 6 p.m. at night. Right? So in our culture, because of cereal company marketing and a lot of the nonsense that happened with the processed food revolution, we got this idea that we're supposed to wake up every morning and have breakfast. Right? It's basically a modern invention. In fact, it can even be traced back to settlers, or I would say more of the three meals a day can be traced back to the settlers when, when they come, came over to the, uh, the pilgrims came over to the United States or America, North America, whatever it's called at that point, uh, they came into, they interacted with the Indians because they considered the Indians as to be heathens and they had like a very eat whenever you want kind of schedule. Well, one way that the pilgrims wanted to kind of separate themselves was to say, we're going to create a breakfast, lunch, and dinner kind of eating schedule to be, because that's part of civilized society, right? And it's just funny. It's like these things can be traced back for hundreds of years and people don't even ever question them. They don't ever question why is the status quo the way it is? And is this the best way to do it? And are there pros of this or there's cons of this, et cetera? So again, I know another tangent, but intermittent fasting is something I'm very passionate about because every human in some way needs to follow some kind of mixed varied eating schedule. We are not made to eat consistently. We are not made to eat the same foods all the time and we're not meant to eat on any kind of schedule. And the more you can go without food, the more you get all those benefits of insulin sensitivity and longevity, et cetera. Social. Humans are social animals. We need to schedule time with friends and family. We need to be around people, especially people that we care about and that we enjoy spending time with. And what we found or what we're seeing is in our connected culture, people are actually doing less of this because maybe they feel like they're connected on Facebook so they don't have to you know, call their friends as much or they don't have to you know, have coffee in person or as much. And everyone's so obsessed with like productivity, making more money, they, they, you know, they drop their social from their life so that they can have more productivity and then you know when when they kind of sacrifice their relationships and they fall out of the habit of of making time for friends and family they realize like oh wow i probably should do that more and in fact i've seen this a lot with a lot of my entrepreneur friends is a lot of them i've kind of gone through the different you know self actual actualization journey that you do as an entrepreneur and a lot of them have now scheduled time on a monthly basis to get together with other uh you know friends family whatever and, or even just like like-minded entrepreneurs because they realize like they're just not happy when they isolate themselves in the room and just work all day, right? And, I, and I've done this at times and I've been you know, an entrepreneur for years now and I've kind of like, I've kind of figured out that it's important and so I've, I've, I do a lot of social scheduling. I schedule a lot of things out, you know, whether it's dinners, game night like we have tonight on, on Sunday, uh, mastermind, which is people come together and we just talk about stuff and do hot seats and stuff. So a lot of cool stuff. Make social part of your life is super important. Bonus principle seven, self-awareness. I'm not going to even start on this topic because this video is already too long. So read this over and go through some of the resources I recommend. Generally, uh, what I will say about it is if you could be more self-aware, you will be better at every aspect of your life. Your life will just be better in every way. Action bias, last principle. If you can become a person that takes action on things, like if you read something in this guide or in this or in this video, something, you know, it sparks your interest or it even sounds good, you want to try it, well, go do it. Go either buy a book about it, read about it, go read some articles, go, go do some research, or just go implement it in your life and see how it, how it works for you. Taking an action bias in your life to things like that, I mean, it's literally the path to a better life. It really is. And again, not going to go too deep in that. I could talk about that for a long time. And then the rest of the guide goes into a couple of diets we talk about and some recommendations. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to cycle through these because we're already, oh, food, yummy, yummy, yummy. And so this is basically real food. This is what life is based on. This is what human optimal nutrition is based on. Ideally, you would buy these ingredients at home. You would use really good cooking oils. You would use uh, favorable cooking methods. Use a lot of wild pink salt, high quality ingredients, and then eat that food. That's really the base of human health is real food. And then we get into some of the wild products. You can learn about them. A nice, easy to cycle way through. The links to buy if you'd like to buy. If you have questions, you can shoot us an email at info at wildfoods.co. And I hope this video is useful, guys. I know it's a little bit rambly. 
I'm getting used to this screen recording thing, uh, but I do like it, and we'll be doing more of these, so stay tuned. And you can check out uh, Logan Fusion Lean, brain cancer survivor. He's one of our wild ambassadors, uses wild products in his everyday life. For him, the things he puts in his body are literally life or death, and so he, he is even stricter than I am when it comes to the things he'll eat, and so he's an inspiration for us all. Highly recommend checking him out. Uh, Jamie, she's, she does a lot of recipe videos. She's been going on YouTube, so you should definitely check her out. My YouTube, you can find more videos, The Wild CEO on YouTube, and this video will be on The Wild Foods YouTube, so make sure you're subscribing to both of these and get all that good content, all right? So that's going to be that's it, guys. That's it. I approve this message. Colin Stuckert, founder, CEO. Thank you for watching. Drop comments below. Like this video. Share it with someone if you think it'll be useful, and if you have any questions or comments, we will get back to you. Thanks for watching.